Imagine a machine that swallows as much electricity as an entire city, yet no one lives inside it. From the outside, it's quiet and long as a runway. Inside, it's not just servers, but four factories locked together like organs in a single body. Power, water and cooling, network fabric, and compute. If one leg stumbles, the whole organism collapses. Six months ago, this was an empty shell of a warehouse. Today, it's Colossus 2, an AI gigafactory in every sense. And here's the part few people say out loud. The AI race won't be won by simply adding more GPUs. It'll be won by stable gigawatts and smart post-training, teaching models when to think deeply and when to answer immediately. In this video, you'll see how to flatten a bumpy grid into smooth power within milliseconds. How a two-stage thermal loop plus a recycling water plant lets you run full throttle without guzzling fresh water. The three-step RL slash post-training loop that cuts thinking cost by approximately 40% for content and coding. Colossus 2 isn't just bigger. It's a template for building intelligence at national scale. Every generation of AI models demands at least 10 times more compute, which means renting power won't cut it. You have to lock in your own energy. The precedent is Colossus 1-122 days from empty shell to a live campus, 100,000 GPUs deployed in 19 days. But Colossus 2 plays in another weight class, nearly 1 million GPUs, peaking around 1.2 gigawatts. At this scale, you're not buying equipment. You're stacking four factories to turn scattered hardware into one unified super brain. Factory one, power. You don't start with silicon, you start with gigawatts you can count on. Memphis has only a few spare tens of megawatts, basically a rounding error. The bold pivot, hop the state line to South Haven, Mississippi, repurpose a mothballed gas plant site that still has pipeline and grid interconnects. Import containerized turbines from Europe and snap them together like industrial Lego, bringing approximately 460 megawatts online in just months. But generation is only half the puzzle. The other half is flattening power in milliseconds. A modern AI rack can pull approximately 130 kilowatts with GPU spikes that can drag down voltage and take out an entire hall. So Colossus two layers energy buffers, grid plus standby, gensets arrow a battery field. Think approximately 168 megapacks to absorb release instantaneous load arrow switch gear slash transformers, PDUS rack. The input is violent. What reaches the racks must be smooth, clean, and stable. Don't ignore this number. Roughly 20% of total budget goes into power infrastructure before a single server lands. In the AI era, the moat isn't how many GPUs you own, it's how many stable megawatts you've locked. Factory 2, cooling and water. A gigawatt in means a gigawatt of heat out. Two minutes without cooling and chips throttle, jobs crash, hardware gets hurt. Colossus 2 runs a two-stage thermal chain. Chip stage, cold plates pressed directly onto GPU slash CPU slash HBM, coolant moving through manifolds, pumps holding steady flow. Water leaves the rack at approximately 113 degrees Fahrenheit, approximately 45 degrees Celsius. Building stage, heat crosses CDU, exchangers into a chilled water loop, then dumps to a massive air-cooled chiller yard. Each pass drops 9 to 13 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 to 7 degrees Celsius, before sending cool water back. That's why cooling can eat 15% of capex, billions just to keep silicon in the sweet spot. Water is the thornier issue. Evaporative campuses can drink millions of gallons per day, competing with homes and farms. Colossus 2 chooses the hard road, build its own water plant. 
An on-site ceramic membrane bioreactor pulls in municipal wastewater and purifies it to ultra-clean specs, supplying up to 13 million gallons per day for cooling loops. You're not drawing fresh water, you're improving the region's water balance, turning discarded flow into the lifeblood of a thinking machine. Factory 3, Network Fabric. 500,000 or a million GPUs mean nothing if they don't stick together. Inside each rack, NVLink fuses 72 GPUs into a single compute island. Logically, they behave like one giant GPU. Step outside the rack and you're in the world of AI-grade Ethernet. 400 gigabits per second per link, 3.6 terabits per second per server. The survival metrics, latency, jitter, and congestion. A few milliseconds offbeat and gradients arrive stale, updates curdle, and efficiency can fall by half. The fabric must manage congestion to keep throughput greater than 90%, optimize per packet routing, and hold tempo for the entire machine. At the physical layer, co-packaged optics shove photonics right up to silicon to slash loss and delay. At the server layer, DPUS shoulder network slash storage slash security so GPUs can just compute. Remember, compute is muscle, fabric is heartbeat. Giant muscles with an arrhythmia are useless. Factory 4, compute. Colossus 2's compute core starts with a sea of hoppers, then expands with next-gen Blackwells, each chip pushing tens of petaflops for inference formats. Phase 1 target, approximately 50 exaflops. HBM with terabytes per second bandwidth rams data into the cores, petabytes of SSDs stream training sets non-stop. EPYC slash Xeon runs the orchestral score underneath. The audacious destination, one million GPUs acting as a single processor. The cold reality, silicon is the biggest line item. Power is second. Everything else is life support to keep the body efficient. The quiet breakthrough, post-training. Here's where many people stop and say, okay, the hardware is enough to break through. But the real leap, the one few discuss, comes from post-training, how we teach the machine to think. Two independent researchers fine-tuned an existing model and vaulted up abstract reasoning benchmarks using two ideas. Open source program synthesis, letting the model generate rules slash strategies step by step, and test time adaptation, letting it adapt while solving. Instead of hoping pre-trained memory finds the answer, they inverted the flow force the model to decompose problems, write rules in plain English, self-test, self-correct, then merge solutions. The jump didn't come from new architecture, it came from using the existing brain more intelligently. Push that philosophy further with a fast variant, reinforcement learning that teaches the model when to think deeply, switch on expensive chains of reasoning, and when to answer fast, save tokens. Net effect, 40% fewer thinking tokens with top tier quality intact. Add ultra long context windows, enough to ingest entire documents slash plays, and fast isn't just fast, it's dramatically cheaper. Product takeaway, you don't have to swap the base architecture. With the right post-training plus RL, you can bend the performance slash cost frontier and ship at scale. The gigawatt race. When compute is directly coupled to clean, reliable energy, the AI race becomes a gigawatt race. The leaders don't just expand data centers, they become energy companies, buying gas plants, signing long-term clean power PPAs, financing next-gen nuclear, dropping battery fields beside the server halls. In some regions, their locked capacity now rivals that of small nations. The boundaries between tech company, power utility, and nation are blurring. The hard question. Megawatts for whom? People or machines? Done right, we can recycle wastewater, capture heat for district warming, lock clean power through long-dated contracts, 
and site campuses near existing energy infrastructure to ease grid stress. Done poorly, we'll see a violin string grid, water conflicts, and compute power concentrated in a few hands. There's another hard truth. These intelligence gigafactories can accelerate breakthroughs in energy, materials, and biomedicine, unlocking cheaper, clean power, faster drugs, more useful robots. Prosperity or scarcity will depend on how we build, operate, and govern this infrastructure of intelligence. Colossus 2 is not a server warehouse. It's four factories moving like a living body. Power keeps the rhythm. Water cools the fever. Fabric holds the beat. Compute delivers the punch. And the quietest breakthrough is in post-training teaching the machine to choose when to think deeply instead of straining all the time. If one leg fails, the chair tips. But when everything locks in, a mute concrete shell turns into a knowledge engine. If you want a dedicated deep dive on an RL slash post-training pipeline, you can apply right now to coding or content, step-by-step -step from rule synthesis, self-testing, self-correction, solution merging, Drop a comment, RL Deep Dive. If this perspective helps, subscribe to Billionaire Investment, hit the bell, like, and share this video. I'll keep unpacking the technical layers behind the thinking machines that are reshaping energy and the multi-billion dollar bets and cash flows that the world's top billionaires are using to build them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.